this story takes us back to the 80s. Now, the internet helps us a lot. Before the internet, it meant being on the phone all the time to talk with family and friends. And it was all attached to the wall with a wire, so you were stuck to the wall. You had to sneak into a bar or wait your turn on the phone or hope friends wandered by your local 7-Eleven or your house. Sometimes we had a tree house we'd all meet at. It was the equivalent of a chat group. We had the trolls and they'd get jealous if not invited and burn the tree house down or something. You know, they'd do it just for no reason. In the old days, there was no texting or email. The only way to communicate was a phone on the wall. If you left the house, you worried about missing an important call while you were gone. When answering machines were invented, that helped a little bit. Once answering machines were invented, I could just leave a message on somebody's answering machine and they would come and meet me wherever I was. Leaving the house in 1980 was like leaving now and leaving your cell phone at home. Even with answering machines, you had to depend on somebody sober answering your home phone, or at least being nice enough to write down a message for you or let the answering machine pick it up. Remember, caller ID wasn't invented yet, so we couldn't just scroll through and see who called. If the situation was like mine, you had a sister that was on the phone all the time, or would get the call and then wouldn't write it down and then forget to tell you until a week later. This led to girls not going to the dance with the guy she wanted because the guy just thought she wasn't interested if she didn't get the message. And it led to hairbrushes flying through the bathroom. It led to a few girly slap fights amongst brothers and sisters. It wasn't like a text message where it would just be on your phone and you could check it later. You had to depend on somebody else to give that message to you. Unless, of course, you were lucky enough to have an answering machine. All of our communication was either in person or on the phone, especially when it was your boyfriend. You'd be on the phone for hours. Just imagine yourself. Your only communication is the phone, and you're talking to your boyfriend the one time of the day that you get to spend time with him. Well, your sister comes in and starts yelling at you that it's her turn, and that you were in love and that you didn't want to hang up the phone was not a good excuse timeline with boyfriends was severely limited. Forget about your privacy. If you have more than one phone in your house, someone could just pick up the phone and listen to your conversation. Or worse, chime in. And lucky me, three sisters. We had one phone attached to the wall to share. You depended on them to pass along phone messages. If they forgot or were mean and didn't tell you a boy called, it could mean that you missed out on a prom date. Or a job or a radio contest prize. If you wanted to hear your favorite song played on the radio, well, you'd be using the phone redialing for hours, getting your busy signal, trying to get through to the radio station to request your song. But then you'd wait hours listening for them to play it on the radio. You see, in the 80s, we also didn't have YouTube. If you wanted to hear a song, you couldn't just buy it on iTunes. My mom would talk forever with ants on the phone if she settled into the comfy chair. But the phone by the wall, who knew? You weren't going to hear from your boyfriend that night or know where your friends were. And if I was on the phone then, no one else could get a phone call. There's another thing that wasn't invented yet. Call waiting. So if you were on the phone and somebody tried to call you, they'd get a busy signal and have to wait it out. And guess what? You wouldn't even know they called. In the late 80s, call waiting finally came out. And if you were really lucky, your parents had it. But you still don't get call waiting if you have somebody on hold. Oh, the woes of being a teenager in the 80s. It was rough. So imagine my excitement when dial-up was created. Yes, I mean the internet. Of course, it wasn't the internet you're used to now. What was great about it was you get internet. But what was bad about it is that if you were on the internet, you couldn't get any phone calls. That's right. You had to choose whether you wanted the phone or the internet at what times. And it wasn't even that you got to choose because if you had other people in the house like I did, well, let's just say it was a little bit of a war. For three years, there was no phones. I remember driving to my mom's house to give her important news. I was always dropping off handwritten notes to people or knocking on their door. 
It was really difficult to get a hold of people. I even remember writing a poem about waiting for the phone to ring, and all the things I'd talk about when my boyfriend finally called. Technology is so much better now. Much easier to get a hold of people. Just glad that I don't have to drive to someone's house to talk to them anymore.